And he goes, how dare you throw wild accusations at me? How dare you insinuate that I didn't pay my coaches? How dare you? I am Frank. I am the affiliate owner collective person, man. Yo, I don't often ask for this, but please feel free to leave a comment. Comment your freaking heads off. I wanna know everything that goes through your mind at the moment which you hear anything on this video. It's time to talk about Frank. You may have seen Frank on my Instagram the other day where I did a little bit of a story talking to Frank, talking about Frank, everything about Frank. His name is Frank! Frank runs the CF Affiliate Collective, which does not Believe it or not, stand for CrossFit. It stands for community first, but everybody knows what you're doing there. Just like you claim to say you know what I was doing in that comment section. What comment section? Well, the one that maybe brought you here in the first place. On a post of his, which by the way, the CF Affiliate Collective page has, I don't know, almost 3,000 followers. Frank likes to continually thank me for bringing traction to his page, but I do not think that he will thank me by the time that this video is over. He's got all these reels, and as you flow through these reels, there is one reel with 20,000 plus views, and it is the one that we are having this little conversation on. Frank says that CrossFit has to be doing all of these things, and I caught wind that there was the possibility that Frank was not paying his coaches, or had not paid a coach. Hello, CrossFit affiliate owners. And you know the saying, if there's smoke, there's fire. If a tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear it, does it even make a sound? I don't think that one works. But the smoke and fire one totally does. So I did the thing that I like to do, and I just threw my fishing pole into the water, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just waiting, and all of a sudden, Frank jumps on the line. His name is Frank! Starts calling me names, calling me a coward because I'm not out in my sources. I like to let him know that I know everything. Oh well. But what Frank doesn't know about what I do is only best put into summation by the best friend that I've made in my YouTube journey and his name is Bryce Smith. Bryce Smith dipped his toe into the pond where I like to swim and out the other end came a YouTube channel of his own. This is something that I would not wish upon my worst enemy but when I go on over to that he's got one view in his most recent video from two days ago. He's got four, there's four, there's 15. He put one up on peptides and who better would it have been to have had been on that show than me? I asked him to go on those shows and there is now a verb called getting briced. And Frank, you are about to get Bryce to the tune of 10,000 Instagram followers lost. Remember in the Bryce Smith video where I said he had a whole bunch of fake followers? Well, why is there a steep drop off all of a sudden? Just randomly, I don't know, it was like a month ago. A steep drop off is not because Bryce went out and blocked 10,000 people. It's because the bots that he bought were purged by Instagram because they do that every once in a while. Wow. I'm here to purge Frank from Instagram. And just like with Bryce, I'm only going to do what he has already done to himself, starting with our good friend, Dave Castro. Don called Frank and actually talked to him about like, hey, do you want to be an affiliate? If so, we would, we don't want you disparaging us or, or making these comments against us. And Frank told him he was going to continue to do that. And so Don decided to de-affiliate him. And I think that was absolutely the right call to make and to do at this point. And um, very proud of Don and the leadership that he exhibited in making this tough call that's probably gonna be controversial and some people might not agree with. You may have remembered this, Frank got de-affiliated. And if you wanna believe the narrative getting spun by Frank, it's he got stepped on by big bad private equity. Oh well. Don Fall made him de-affiliate him, punched him in the face. But the way that I look at it is why would I always talk crap about Nike and then put on a pair of Metcons? I wouldn't because I'm currently wearing a pair of Metcons. See these things? Yeah, I'm wearing them right now. You've also never heard me say a bad word about Nike. And if I did say bad words about Nike, I wouldn't wear their shoes. And it absolutely no sense for him to be affiliated. It was very good that Don be affiliated him. And now that I'm talking about all this stuff, I'm going to go on over to the First City CrossFit Monterey, California website, where it says First City CrossFit. Shouldn't you take that off of your website, Mr. Freaking Frank? You are no longer an affiliate, by the way. CrossFit should be sending you a prompt cease and desist for doing that. You are currently using something that they have that people pay for on your website to gain traction to your place of business that isn't a freaking CrossFit gym. But it doesn't stop there. Check this out. When I took my level two over 10 years ago. It's interesting that you said over 10 years ago, because from what I understand, the level two doesn't stick around for 10 years. And I also don't see your name on the list of listed level two people. And from what I also understand, that does not go away, which just means that you didn't have your level two up to date. So how was it that you were an affiliate if you also didn't have your level one or level two up to date? Huh? I thought every gym in my coat in my, or every coach in my gym, should have their level two. I'm showing you this because I'm still on the website and I go on over to the coaches and you see 
Frank, he has himself listed as a level two trainer there, which we already know that he isn't a level two trainer anymore. That thing is no longer up to date. He also said in that clip right there on a podcast that he does with this guy named Stu. Stu is the man. Stu is everything that I think that Frank wants to be. WTF Gym Talk. It's at 1.63 thousand subscribers and there will be a whole bunch of stuff from this podcast in the back end of this video. And I do suggest like always that you go watch the whole thing in its entirety. I always say that because I don't want you to think that I'm doing some sort of disservice to the words that are coming out of Frank's mouth. I'm not just taking hot takes of it and making him look like an idiot. He makes himself look like a freaking idiot. But the reason that I put this one up right here is because he says every coach in my gym should have their level two. All of his coaches should have a level two, right? But that's interesting because when I'm over on the website, he has himself listed as a level two, which we know isn't true. Oh, look at me, Dr. Seuss. This Brian guy does have his level two, but four out of the 16 people on that website have listed L2s. It's nothing about these people, by the way, but it's the first instance of many where this dude isn't living by his own rules. Everybody in my affiliate should have a level two, but yet they don't. And you say that they should, but yours isn't up to date. Oh, well. So that's called being a hypocrite frank maybe i maybe it's not a good decision but i let people bring their dogs like no excuses no excuses right is kind of the philosophy i have so Stu just the whole time over here is like uh, but frank does say no excuses no excuses mr no excuses frank over here is that what you think which really brings me to the meat and potatoes of this thing you're gonna like this you're you're all really gonna like this unless your name's frank a member of the gym formerly known as first city crossfit monterey oh well sent an email over to frank and in this email he wanted to cancel his membership and then he did something that's actually a really kind thing to do if you are leaving a facility, you let the owner know why you're leaving because then the owner has the opportunity to make those changes. Mention stuff such as price increases, mention stuff such as members having to fill in at the last minute to coach classes. Occasionally the workouts aren't posted or they're changed abruptly. Members constantly having to welcome new potential customers into the gym because there isn't staff available and things such as that nature. I know that there will be some affiliate owners. There will be some people out there knowing that this is common practice in CrossFit affiliates, but that doesn't mean that it's good. Differentiate, separate what is good practice and what happens from where we go from here. It doesn't matter! Because Frank responds. Firstly, thank you for being a member of First City Community. Doesn't say CrossFit. I always appreciate feedback from members and I appreciate you taking the time to share your feedback with me. Is that what you think? You think? For all of the areas you mentioned, we want to hope to do better. That sounds good. Should have kind of just stopped there. Like, thank you. We understand that you don't want to be a member anymore and carry on on your merry way. But below is an explanation of the way it is if you are interested in reading it. Thanks. Frank. Now this is long and I'm only gonna give you the highlights, such as we raised our membership prices because our flow water unit increased, sugar wad rates increased, mayhem rates increased, and we only raised it by 3% and then 5%. So we are in the good and they are the big bad wolves, just like private equity, right Frank? Two, we raised prices because over the last six months we have struggled to pay rent on our bills. Some of our coaches that we owe money to, oh, you, yourself, are admitting that you owe money to your coaches, Frank, in an email to this member that's canceling their membership? Oh, well. Whoa! You said it, Frank! You! People aren't telling me stuff left and right. You're telling people these things. But I'm the coward. Andrew Hiller, the freaking coward! I am the manager, and I usually am at the gym from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on these days where I don't have my daughter. Okay, you got a daughter, and you gotta take care of her. I don't know anything about that. It doesn't matter! I handle all of the back-end stuff, such as paying the bills, the membership adjustments, member communications, corresponding with the providers, managing the coaching schedules, which is not visible to most people, so it is understandable that most people don't realize how much I do. I also coach workouts and do personal training on ramps. This is not stuff that needs to be told to a member who is leaving your gym. They didn't ask. All that the member did is said, hey, this is what it looks like. It's like when people told me to stop swearing on my YouTube videos because it doesn't look good, so I had an option. I'm not going to sit there and be like, I swear because I swear because I swear because I'm just gonna stop swearing or I'm not gonna stop swearing and then I'm not gonna explain myself but I realize now what it looks like when I swear on a YouTube video and it just shuts people off from the outside people don't care about all this stuff they're either going to watch your video or they're not going to watch your video do you see what I'm doing here Frank I'm comparing what I do to what you do and this won't be the last time that I do that I'm sure here's another bit coaching is a passion for all of our coaches and while we'd like to pay them more it is not an option due to the lack of funds we are a small business and cannot afford to have someone staffing them at the front desk all day. We ask coaches to handle a lot and don't give them a hard time if they are occasionally a little late. If we did, they would likely leave and they would not be able to 
to do staff workouts. Oh, no. You ask them to show up on time to their job and they're gonna leave? Oh, no. You're saying this, Frank? I talked to the coach, but we really don't have any recourse as there is not people lined up to coach. We lose a coach, we might have difficulty staffing workouts. The transient nature of this area makes member and coach turnover a challenge. Okay, how is this CrossFit's fault? How is what you're saying the fault of CrossFit? It isn't. None of this is CrossFit's fault. This is just gym owner stuff. It's gym owner stuff. Here's something about stopping providing chalk during COVID because it is a health hazard. Athletes continue to fill chalk buckets passively insisting that we continue to provide it to them, refusing to simply get a container and bring their own. You're asking members to bring their own chalk, Frank? Athletes dipping their sweaty and sometimes bloody hands into a community chalk bucket is unsanitary and gross, he states. Frank states. Just like my swearing analogy that I just made, okay, Hey Frank, you can do those things, but this person who's canceling their membership does not need to hear it. If they want to leave because of that thing, you don't need to tell them why you are right and why they are wrong. They can just leave. And then you can just have a chalk bucket or wait, no, no, no. You can just not have a chalk bucket. No chalk bucket because you don't want it, Frank. And then my favorite part, there are a few entitled members who regularly abuse and disrupt the gym. They don't clean up after themselves, leaving chalk and pet hair all over the floor and garbage, including thumb tape all over the gym. They don't clean up their equipment and they often leave it out. They take things away from the retail room without paying. <gasps> Their clothing and gear is often dumped in a huge pile, often blocking access to the behind the front desk. They have even come to the gym despite canceling their membership. I suspect that these same entitled members of the community are making assumptions about the gym's financials and my financials and share this assumption as fact and breeding resentment. It sounds like I may need to have a discussion with these members. I suspect one person in particular, and they may have been a member at two other gyms in the area and are no longer working out here. I suspect that because they were asked to leave for similar reasons. Meanwhile, for every other one of those members, I have 50 more that will show up and humbly accept the coaching, they'll work hard, get results, gladly pay their membership fees, and even leave us five-star reviews. He then goes on to state that he gave up some lucrative career with benefits and invested his life savings into opening up this gym so that people had a place to do CrossFit. He doesn't regret it for one second, but I'll be damned, does it seem like Frank regrets it, you and I? Yes. Does everyone around here seem via that email that Frank is totally regretting his decision to give up his lucrative career? Yes. yes! Because of the entitled members who like to complain about shock buckets and now need to also answer the front door because the coaches aren't showing up on time. Oh my god, is this a mess and we're only halfway done here. There are probably a handful of you guys who are even asking who, oh who is Frank Andrew? We don't know who Frank is and we're halfway into the video. Is he just some nut whack job gym owner because he's not an affiliate owner anymore because not only is he some nut oh whack job gym owner he's trying to get a whole bunch of other people to collectively get together and purchase crossfit because only then can people just like frank decide how to run a multinational business yes i stole that from Step Brothers because i will admit that i have no idea how a business like that is ran just like frank should do this stew person on the wtf fitness podcast what, what exactly is it? I want to make sure I get this right because I got to give this dude credit. He is a monster. WTF Gym Talk. He's got a YouTube channel. You should go listen to this whole thing. It is incredible. We're going to start here and we're going to do one of these. We bounce back and forth. Let's do it. Make it sure. easy for them. We're busy gym owners. We're not marketing. You know, the whole point, we, the reason we pay for a brand is for the brand to do at least some of the marketing for us, right? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Cut time out. Whoa, whoa, Frank, I like you, but I'm going to cut you off there. You pay for a license. You only pay to use one term, C, capital C, R, O, S, S, capital F, I, T. You only sure. pay to use the term. You get nothing else in a license model. That was the agreement on day one. The day he made it, it's been the agreement to today. So the idea that you think you should get anything else is that now you're venturing into franchising, which I know none of you guys want. It's about 15 minutes into the podcast. He looks over, he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I like what you're saying, but everything you're saying sounds a lot like franchising. He pushes back a lot. And I also told you that I was gonna bring up my YouTube thing a little bit more. I make videos, I put them on YouTube. And I've got two options once I put a video up. Let's say a video gets 10 views and my name is Bryce Smith. And I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna go, I just don't get it. It's a great video. I don't know. It must be YouTube. YouTube just hates me. But YouTube doesn't hate you. And CrossFit doesn't hate Frank. CrossFit is not the reason that Frank is doing poorly as a gym 
owner because I just showed you all the email. And that email is everything that Frank needs to know about why the gym isn't doing well. If the gym was doing well, you wouldn't have this headspace about what CrossFit is or is not doing for him. If I put up a video and it gets 10,000 views instead of 20,000 views, I've got two options. I either say, oh, this video didn't do well for this reason, or I knew that this option would happen. If I make a video, let's say on water bottles, I'm not going to get anywhere near as much traction on this video than I would if I made a Sporty Beth video. You guys like the idea of a Sporty Beth video and you would say, why is Andrew making a water bottle video? We don't get it. And I couldn't blame you for that. I would just need to say, well, I wanted to make a water bottle video. I, I, I don't want to give you guys chalk. I'm not going to explain and sit there and yell at YouTube for giving me bad impressions because I made a water bottle video. A way you can um, protect the brand is by just creating a lot of um, education or opportunity and removing obstacles to educate coaches on how to be better. It's not required, right? You don't have to necessarily require it. They have a very low requirement of CrossFit level one, right? But and now as a gym owner, you have to take a level two. I'm realizing right now that Frank has stated multiple times that he thinks that the only reason that I'm doing any of this is because I'm receiving money from private equity. They have paid off Andrew Hiller to not say anything, to not get behind the collective. And again, that's his narrative. I haven't received a single penny from anybody. And I know that there are messages, but that's just me messing with Frank because I was messing with Frank. I wanted to leave Frank alone. I kind of felt bad for him. I didn't want to kick him in the face the same way I kicked Bryce in the face. But Frank has to get kicked in the freaking face. Oh, well. Because because it's on topics like this where he says, you know, they need to be more educated. But this is something that has literally just happened. In order to open up an affiliate or to remain an affiliate owner, you have to have your level two. Something that Frank himself didn't have and hadn't re-upped in a decade. When I took my level two over 10 years ago, I think there should be a drip model where every day CrossFit's putting out a five or, you know, three to five minute video that coaches can watch and add to their bag of tricks, they call it little tips and tricks that coaches could be using, you know, CrossFit, again, if they want to protect the brand and keep it something that business owners want associated with their business, you have a, an obligation to the, the brand um, to make coaches better because they are largely the face of your brand. I'd say that he's not wrong there, but what we know up to this point makes it sound even more incredible, doesn't it? And I think Stu goes into a little bit of a monologue right here on the back of that topic. Tomorrow, Frank, you and me can go create s and underwear company and we can start printing underwear out of my garage and we can pay Calvin Klein for a license. Now, if our underwear is made of duct tape and fucking gravel, we're not going to sell a ton of it. It's not going to feel good. And guess what? At a certain point, they're going to get word of that and they could take our license away and not allow us to renew it. Or like Greg said, we'd go out of business anyway and the cream rises to the top. But if we wanted to go and franchise a Warby Parker, we wouldn't have we, the, ex, the amount of extensive, like we would be vetted. Who are they? Do they align with our core values? Have they had the proper training? We're going to get them to put a ton of money in so they have skin in the game. We're going to tell them what size shops they can get, what kind of glasses they can sell, and how to sell them. Do, do you see the diff? Like, because I have this fundamental business different, like, you know, issue with when people say the brand needs of CrossFit. I'm like, you guys are the brand. You're the stewards of the brand. CrossFit HQ is there. Simply, their only way to make money is by selling licenses. So it is, they hope you guys do a good job. They need to support you. I agree that a thousand percent, but they are not in charge of the brand. You guys are. Well, then that's what I, I think that's a great segue. And I, and I want to kind of take a quick moment to let people know that what we're doing is on Instagram right now. That blew my freaking mind because Stu just goes off and he has this awesome analogy that is, hey, you can sell Calvin Klein underwear, but you can name it as your own the same way that Noble tried to sell a Tim Murray t-shirt as a Patagon t-shirt or whatever they did. And you've got the option to piss everybody off the way that Noble pissed off the world's fittest dwarf. And he lays the groundwork for this awesome conversation between the two of them. And Frank's just sitting there and he goes, well, I would actually like to point you to my Instagram. Completely deflects the topic and does not at all address what Stu had to say there. And it drove me nuts because I was just waiting to hear what he had to say, but he didn't say anything. Um, we have issues with how the company is um, largely being directed in terms of for profit um, and profit, really maximizing profit, right? Greg took profits um, and, he, and he did well, right? <laughs> Um, but you have private equity now in charge and they're trying to cut costs and they're making decisions that seem to um, either are 
not good decisions. Um, they're, in some cases, they're aligning with um, big soda. Here I pulled up a picture of something. And, you know, I've been accused of this in the past on Reddit in particular. I didn't know it until I looked it up, but it's the Dunning-Kruger effect. And I think that right now we're approaching, if not at critical mass of the peak of Mount Stupid. If you have anything, you should want it to be the absolute best that it can be. Or you should just not have it. It should fulfill you in some way. And for private equity, I suppose their only goal is to make money. But what is wrong with that? I would say that Frank should be screaming from the top of the mountains, at the top of his lungs. The only thing that he should be saying is that the way private equity would make the most money would be to possibly hear some of the stuff that's maybe echoed on this Efron podcast, like way down on the hill, like way down in the valley. What are they saying down there? That dude who made it so freaking big at being the media director of the global biggest brand or whatever he likes to say. I, um, what, I am the uh, media director of the fastest growing chain in world history. And, uh, but no, private equity is bad because I, Frank, who run this affiliate, where when I get a response from a member, all I have to do is throw all my woes and worries at the member while they're leaving. Because private equity is bad. They're bad, they're bad, they're bad. But they're trying to make money. I think all businesses should make money. I think everybody should make money. It'd be like if I had a kid and I didn't want to have the best kid ever. You want to be an astronaut? Let's go be the best astronaut there is. You want to go to the NBA? Let's go to the NBA. You want to buy CrossFit? I want CrossFit to be as big as possible. And if I want to sell it, it's some point well hell i'll sell it at some point and hopefully that next person also does the same thing and then it just continuously gets better i'm saying this not meaning i'm supporting everything that they do actually it's the quite the opposite i'm just saying that frank ain't the guy because he's at the peak amount stupid he's gonna soon be in the valley of despair with bryce there are people that are running the company who are fighting for affiliates but it shouldn't be a fight they're having to fight for it because private equity doesn't want to spend money on things that help affiliates but don't result in profits for a HQ. Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't spending money on affiliates really be the only thing that would make them more money? That's kind of where they make all of their money. I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to buy a business. You're going to want to redo the kitchen. You're going to want to redo the bathroom. You're going to want to re-landscape the yard, maybe put it in a pool. And you're doing all of those things, which increases the value of the house. Don't you think CrossFit's private equity people would be thinking if we increase the value of the affiliation price, then all of a sudden our bottom line rises as well. And just because you buy a house doesn't mean you gotta die in the house, Frank. But for CrossFit affiliate owners, would we agree that community is a term to describe the, the group of membership holding individuals that show up every day at a, any particular CrossFit affiliate? Would we agree on that? Hold on while Frank tries to answer and then just says, I agree anyway. I think that's the largest part of the community. I mean, I think there's lots of, you know, maybe a more business term would be stakeholders, right? I mean, I think the games athletes, right? They certainly have um, a part in the community and not to say that they're not, you know, potentially paying members, but, you know, um, you know, you could argue that, you um, yeah, I guess okay. I guess you're right on. I think members yes. make up the majority. Of and this is why he's not the guy. I know I just said he's not the guy, but if you want another example, that's it. A stew pitches something awesome. Isn't this what CrossFit is at the community level? Isn't this what it stands for? I'm Frank. His name is Frank. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I guess you're right. You don't have to talk. Sometimes they can just be right. Sometimes you can just be wrong. Sometimes you can shut your freaking mouth, Frank. Yeah, so I think, you know, the profit comes at the affiliate level. Right. The people that are on the ground doing the work, the profit comes from the coaches, right? A, a profitable affiliate is able to pay their coaches more and coaches make the money and they're the ones on the ground, again, promoting the methodology, doing the marketing, right? Um, the better the coach, um, the more them they should be able to make, right? I want to know what forum you read this on because clearly it's not something you're doing in your day to day as you allow your coaches to show up late and not pay them to be better or pay for whatever sort of continuing education that you say that they should get, but you don't have in your own affiliate, former affiliate, sorry, former affiliate. Do you believe there's any wins in the column of HQ doing better to pursue excellence? Any at all? I think they've done what I'll say I think is the bare minimum. Given their budget and the amount of money they collect from affiliates, I think they've done the bare minimum, if that. Um, I think I, affiliate roundtables are largely affiliates helping affiliates, and this happened well before CrossFit started running roundtables. It was called the Facebook group, and there was multiple Facebook groups for affiliate owners, right? This, we didn't need to get together for a roundtable. And I think people that participate in, you know, if, when affiliates talk to other affiliates, it certainly is helpful. I think most affiliates leave those roundtables feeling good about it. 
um, in terms of, you know, the cap programming, like, great, I'm glad you finally got on board and you're do offering a programming option. But from what I've heard, it's not, not many gyms are using it because it's not, I guess, what most gyms want to follow. You know, Mayhem and Comp Train, they've been around for decades. So CrossFit's finally getting on board and they've come up with the offering that I think, again, a lot of gyms don't find. But mayhem and, help. real quick, Mayhem and Comp Train are for profit. You see what Stu did right there? He let him talk for a little bit. He let him dig his grave and he threw him into it. Is there anything that they have done properly? They kind of streamlined the Facebook group thread so that all the affiliates were in one place. That's a really good thing. Frank doesn't want to give them credit where credit's due because he's not going to do that. He just wants to talk like what I just showed you. He just has to talk about everything forever. And then number two, he actually throws a stone at Greg Glassman. We finally got Greg to give us some sort of programming. But if you've ever listened to a word that Greg's had to say, it fundamentally goes against what CrossFit is to make everybody do one thing. Yeah, sure, there's .com and you can do it, but everybody Everybody should be able to do anything anywhere and there should be no streamlined programming. If anything, Frank should have said, yeah, there's cap, but there shouldn't be cap. But he says that there is cap and then Stu goes, whoa, well, isn't that for profit though? You say it's good, but isn't that for profit? Isn't that a bad thing, Frank? I thought all for profit stuff was bad, Frank. But in order for them to pay someone to answer the emails of the affiliates and pay someone to put the videos out on the Super Bowl commercial. Hold up, that's my idea, Stu. And thank you for watching my videos, Stu. They have to to sell it for more than it cost. That's not true. Of course it's not true. Nothing that anyone else has to say is true and Frank's right about everything. Freaking Frank. Right now their annual revenue is $100 million or over $100 million. So tell me how that money Where is, is being it? Is spent. that published somewhere? Um, you know, I think it's, it's kind of common knowledge in the ether. And I mean, I get it. At one point they had 15,000 affiliates. Now they're down to 12,000. So, but I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of splitting hairs. It's around 100 million, right? Hmm. Hmm. There's a couple of things to this, but the big one that I want to point out is that I asked Frank a question on one of his recent posts on an Instagram reel. Maybe you heard about it in the beginning of this video. Maybe you've been there, but I asked him if he paid his coaches and he goes, how dare you throw wild accusations at me? How dare you insinuate that I didn't pay my coaches? How dare you? I am Frank. I am the affiliate owner collective person, man. But he's over here just assuming that CrossFit made a hundred million dollars. Where is it? Is that spent. published somewhere? Um, you know, I think it's kind of common knowledge in the ether. And with that assumption, he's now trying to gather a whole bunch of affiliates together to buy CrossFit back based upon his assumptions. Some dude who couldn't even run his own affiliate. That's called being a Frankocrit. A Frankocrit. That's the new thing. We got getting embraced and a Frankocrit. No longer a hypocrite. Telling affiliate owners how our money is being spent. Hey, that's one thing I can get aboard. Telling everybody everything, every bit of information. We know that Frank does that. Um, and again, uh, my point being that affiliates pay these fees, you know, we pay for edu we pay for education via our trainers. Um, you know, how is that money being spent? And right now, I don't think it's being spent um, in, in a productive way I, or, or as efficient a way as it could be. And ultimately, affiliate owners know best how our fees should be spent. Irony. Hypocrisy. Frankocracy. This guy. Freaking Frank. Can't pay his coaches. Sugar wad's too expensive. The water machine is too expensive. And affiliate owners know where the money should be spent. Do you not see how insane this is? You know, I think some affiliate owners fool themselves into believing private equity bought this because they love CrossFit. They don't, right? They're they're business guys and they're just like we do CrossFit. They do making profits. And how do they make profits, right? We do thrusters and burpees. They cut costs and they increase revenue. Remember when Eric Rosa bought CrossFit and everybody thought that it was the greatest thing ever because he loves CrossFit. Unlike Greg Glassman, that stupid racist dude who doesn't know anything. Thought Eric Rosa was the shining light that did and loved CrossFit. He was gone, private equity's in. And again, we're back to the peak amount stupid. What can you prove to me besides anecdotally that had the CrossFit nation, the CrossFit affiliate nation has suffered collectively? What are the damages? So what I will tell you is that if that affiliate owners, I'm not the only one, right? Affiliate owners, you like large in, I believe in large, don't feel like they are getting their money's worth when they're sending a check to cross. What does that mean? Ultimately, it means, you know, I think there's there's lots of ways people feel like cross things cross it should be doing better. I mean, 
Come on! Stu goes, what can you tell me for sure, concretely? What can you prove to me, besides anecdotally, without any freaking doubt that the CrossFit ecosystem has suffered? I believe, don't feel like CrossFit. What does that mean? You know, I think there's there's lots of ways people feel like cross things CrossFit should be doing better. I mean, collectively, what's the suffering? Frank's answer, well, sits back in his chair, Actually, he sits back in his toilet because he's doing the whole thing from a bathroom and he goes, Sorry, my lighting's not great. I'm huddled in my bathroom. <laughs> no. Stu, you know, I don't speak for myself, but we all feel and I hope. And there's this thing in my gut that says, but that's not what he asked. And it's because you have nothing, Frank. Nothing. Nothing. You can cross. You can do whatever they want right now. Right. But affiliates can also, again, like you mentioned, make the decision of, you know, do, do do I see value in this? And if I can take my three hundred dollars and pay some local videographer to do create marketing content that's specific to my gym, and have that mark and that marketing content person is going to share that content to my, to my social media for me. Yeah, you know, again, I'm going to make that decision. We're going right back to the Andrew Hiller uses YouTube to make videos, and people use CrossFit to have gyms. This is going to be one that people are going to need to wrap their heads around for a minute. All of you people are gym owners, right? Every pe person who's watching this, not every person, but let's just say that you are an affiliate owner. No, 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 no. You are a gym owner who stamped CrossFit on it and is doing wall balls and burpees and the methodology and all that, right? But the only thing that you gotta think about for a minute is that when the whole pandemic thing goes down and the whole Greg Glassman debacle goes down way back when it did, there were people everywhere who just took that little CrossFit logo off of their gym and they still ran businesses, which means that all of you people still run businesses. And if you decided to throw that sticker back up on the wall, the CrossFit sticker, that means that you run a gym and it means that you find value in the little CrossFit sticker on the top of your building. Maybe it's not a sticker, maybe it's a logo, maybe it's a banner, maybe it's a flag, but you're flying that thing and you see the value in it. The same way where I, when I sit back in my garage and I wanna say upload to YouTube, it's different than if I upload to Rumble, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, or anything because I am going to get the most out of uploading to YouTube. The same way that when you open your gym business, Frank, you're going to get the most out of sniping CrossFit up on the wall for the low, low price of $4,500 a year. Idiot. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me, let me give you some of the answers to your questions, I think. Right. So, so, I've, so again, the purchase price is, is very up in the air, right? I mean, I heard from one person who I believe has some insight into HQ saying that HQ is bleeding money and in 12 to 18 months, they're just going to look to unload this and get it off their books, right? Andrew Hiller can't come to my comment section and say that I might or may not be paying my coaches, but I can say that I talked to somebody at HQ, somebody at HQ, and they're hemorrhaging money and now we can step in. We can all get behind Frank and we can step in and buy CrossFit. One of the discussions or issues with the current ownership is that they settled the NSCA lawsuit. Um, now, if they settled that for $100 million, and this is a rumor, because I've been told I've been making wildly inaccurate statements, but this is what the rumor is. I didn't come up with this. But let's say they bought it for $200 million. They settled the NSCA lawsuit for $100 million. Frank's going to be watching this video. He's going to be, I don't know, 30 minutes into it or so. And he's going to be sitting on his same toilet. And he's going to need to look at himself in the mirror. Turn to the left, turn to the right, whichever way the mirror is in that bathroom where the toilet he's sitting on. And he's going to have to say, Andrew Hiller posted a rumor, yeah, a question in my comment section. And now I am a Frankocrit for now saying that, Ugh! I heard a rumor that this is a rumor that they settled the NSCA case. Because I've been told I've been making wildly inaccurate statements, but I've been told that this is wildly inaccurate. Well, oh well. I, I heard a rumor, Frank. I heard a rumor that you weren't paying your coaches all the way through. Why is it okay that you can say you heard a rumor, but it's not okay that I can say that I heard a rumor? And remember, I make videos on the internet. I'm a content creator. You are the guy who's trying to gather all these affiliates together to put, put, give all their money to you, to trust you, to buy CrossFit. I mean, maybe, I don't know if you, has anyone called and said, would you guys entertain a purchase offer? I, we're not there yet, all right? And I think that, um, I think that HQ isn't gonna voluntarily give us this information, right? They've signed an NDA with regards to the 
NSCA lawsuit settlement. Is that a rumor too? And also, all of this work, and you haven't even talked to them yet? We're gonna get all everyone together, all 10 people that, that are flooding your inboxes saying, oh yeah, we'll give you five bucks to try to buy CrossFit, and you haven't even talked to them yet? You don't even know if they're gonna get on board with this? They got 100 million out for the NSCA lawsuit. How do you know that? That arg I, I would argue, and I think most affiliates, if they know the details, would say this deeply hurt the brand. Why? You can't just say that, why? Maybe it's true, maybe it's false, but why can you say it like they're sitting on your toilet? Then they, so they extracted 100 million out of the company and the brand. Then they took a loan on CrossFit's books for 100 million, again, I- What? How do you know that? I don't know this. Oh, you don't know this, but you're sitting on the toilet, just like I'm sitting in my chair and I'm like, I heard that you uh, may or may not have paid your coaches, Frank. You wildly and you're a coward. And Rose, oh, oh, a freaking coward. The part of the problem is we don't know this. Then why are we take saying a loan out for $100 million. What's that? Then, so if we're not sure, why, again, like why, again, it, because I generally, again, I generally want your movement. I, I'm very interested. I told you this whole thing is I'm very intrigued. The more we make these, make public things like I heard this, I heard that. It makes it sounds like high, you know, high school hallway gossip, and people will decrease what they take seriously. Because because we're playing a poker game, right? P -p -p poker game. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> we're playing a poker game with hundreds of millions of dollars, and we're gonna give all of it to Frank. He's gonna push all the affiliate owners' chips in, and we're gonna go all in, and we're gonna lose. Because if I had to take one of these two people to trust all of my freaking money with when I was an affiliate owner, I'd choose the dude in the orange glasses, Stu. He's a monster. How do affiliates make that money, right? How do we come up with a hundred million dollars? Well, collectively, there's let's say we get ten thousand affiliates on board. You know, you can do the math, and I think the math was a hundred million dollars. Uh, divided by 10,000 affiliates, and each of those affiliates takes out a loan for the amount they owe, over 10 years at 6% interest, they're paying $111 a month. Again, right? and this, that's, is, in this, one is very, this is like using a mortgage calculator, are you using like a mortgage calculator yeah. online to run this? Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so again, so you're saying 10,000 out of 13, so at 76%, I'm gonna, 76% of CrossFit gyms are probably not bankable for a fucking SBA loan. Stu is a monster. A monster! He's a god amongst men, at least in this room. There's two men in this room. One of them legitimately has his pants around his ankles, and the other one's looking at him. And, and, and Frank has multiple times thanked me for the followers that he's put on in the past couple of days. And he's put on like 20, maybe 30, and at no point has he put on more than 50 followers because of what's been going on between the two of us. But there is a world, and I concretely believe that Frank thinks that he has 2,800 followers, and every single one of them is an affiliate owner. And every single one of them is going to just hand him twenty thousand dollars so that they could all go and buy CrossFit. But not, but but they haven't talked to CrossFit. Frank hasn't talked to CrossFit. No one's talked to CrossFit. CrossFit, for all anybody knows, by the way, has no intentions of selling it. That is another freaking rumor being thrown around. No one said it anywhere. Don Fall actually said it somewhere. No, Don Fall. You want to know what he said? They've got goals. They've got benchmarks. Three to five year benchmarks. That doesn't mean sales. This video is going to be weird for a whole lot of people because typically. I I'm the one throwing mud at CrossFit. Here I am trying to freaking pick Frank apart by the butthole, which isn't hard because he's pantsless, sitting on the toilet. Stu's over here like, did you go, did you do this on a, on a mortgage loan calculator on the internet? Are you using like a mortgage calculator yeah. online to run this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So again, so you're saying 10,000 out of 13. And Stu and Frank's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Got me. <laughs> and I've recently gone through this phenomenon that is, if you are constantly able to type paragraphs on your phone, the way Frank does in response to me, go check out that thread on a page that he should shut down yesterday. Turn that thing off. You are wasting your time. Frank, go to your affiliate, go look to that email that you sent that member as they were leaving and really reflect on it. The same way where I have tried to tell you a couple times in this video, Andrew Hiller puts up a video on YouTube and it's up to me to either make a better video or accept why it did bad. You've done neither of those things. You have blamed the entity where you posted the video. You have a gym. You put CrossFit on it, 
You had it ripped away because you're a freaking moron. You can't pay the $4,500 anymore to get the certifications that you don't have, to pay the coaches that you may or may not have paid, to have the members that are leaving your gym, and the whole time all you had to do was take all the feedback that you're getting constantly and stop throwing it to the side and blaming everybody but yourself. This is what this whole video is. It's a montage, a shining example of people who just blame everybody for everything and can't take responsibility for the stuff that's going on and they want to blame private equity. Oh well. Private equity, big bad monster. <sighs> I may or may not say the nicest things about them at certain points, but you can't deny the fact that making money is a good thing. It's something that Frank has shown that he cannot do. If you are an affiliate out there, why on God's green earth would you send him a penny? A penny! You wouldn't. There's gonna be a board to replace the board. That's the easiest and the most on the spot thing that I've heard about anything that he wants to do. We're gonna have a board of affiliate owners who are going to decide what's best for the vision of CrossFit. Well, dude, dude, anybody who gets aboard this thing at this moment, if let's say that you do get a, a bunch of podunk idiot gym owners who are like, oh yeah, CrossFit's so bad. And they're all like you. You want 5,000 people like you? You wanna decide from those 5,000 people? I don't think so. What you're gonna be left with is the same thing that you've got already. You're gonna have Dave, you're gonna have Bosman, you're gonna have Nicole, you're gonna have those people who are already there, but the affiliates own it. The real issues with CrossFit right now, guys, you wanna know the real issues with CrossFit right now? He doesn't have a plan. There is no plan. He hasn't even talked to CrossFit. If I could go over to the Affiliate Collective page, click on a link that brings me to a PDF sheet that says, these are the action items that we're going to do. Here's the date that we're going to approach CrossFit. We need X amount of dollars to do so. They, they, they do this. They're called Kickstarters. It just, this is on a much larger base. What are you gonna do in the foreign countries? Because you're from the United States. You're from Monterey, California. What are you gonna do with Europe and Asia? And how are you gonna pay all these people who take care of these places. Frank doesn't know what he needs to know and he is at the peak of Mount Stupid. The issue and what he may or may not understand is that we were at the plateau of sustainability. That's what we had when we had Greg Glassman. What we're missing is a guru. What we're missing is a media department pumping out the stuff that the guru had and there's a dead stop right there. Subscribe to my freaking YouTube channel and I'll make more stuff like this. This is the good stuff. Frank is the bad stuff. That's all I got to say about this. Andrew Hiller, out. Yes, you can!